Strictly speaking, for a manuscript to be described as illuminated, it should have decoration of gold or silver, although the term is now widely used to describe any brightly illustrated text. One of the most unashamedly opulent of such manuscripts was the Pontifical, a manual for bishops giving guidance on special services, such as the consecration of cathedrals. This one was created for the Bishop of Metz. I love the spectacular abstract backgrounds, especially this dazzling diamond lattice of gold and blue. It imbues you with a sense of the sacred. In the book's pages, the world seems to shimmer with spiritual energy, the artist's way of expressing the ineffable mysteries of the divine. As part of her research for the exhibition, Penny Price spent months reproducing a single leaf from the Metz Pontifical. She used exactly the same materials as the original artist. When it comes to creating something like this, sort of, it's a painting on a page, mm -hmm. how many stages of process are involved there? I mean, this little array of things that you've got out here suggests that you, before you paint, you, can, you, you have, have to, to make your paint. Thought. I do, yes. So that's your raw lapis lazuli, as from the mine. Yeah. You are then going to what? Grind that up in a in a muscle it's, it's a muscle and porter, <laughs> a pestle and mortar. <laughs> uh, or on or on a slab. And the the result is this, which is the uh, powdered lapis, which I'm not going to tip out because it's too precious. In the past, it would have been more expensive than a book of gold. But if we come to the, as it were, you know, the centerpiece, the star attraction yes. of the whole production, the the, the central picture, the the miniature. The miniature. Um, presumably, it's not just drawn out in freehand. Presumably, there's some kind of design and transfer process. Yes. Uh, I have here a piece of slunk vellum, which is calf skin. So it's from an unborn calf, and it's very, very thin. You can probably see my fingers through it. So it's Something almost slightly like ghoulish skin. about that, isn't I know, it? Yes. It, it, it's, it, yes. it's produced from a fetus. Yes. I would place my uterine vellum... Um, or uh, thin, thin paper on, onto the image and trace it down, first of all, with a stylus. So it's uh, almost like a form of print transfer processing, isn't it? It it's is. not far away. Mm. Oh, it's really very good, isn't it? I wonder and, what uh, the occupational hazards of it were. A bit of lead poisoning. A bit of lead poisoning, yes. Presumably some know. very, very sore eyes. Very sore eyes. I mean, sometimes you get a little colophon at the end of a piece of work saying, thank God I've finished this piece of work. Really? You know? um, and, uh, That's what it is. Yes, it's full you know. of lovely little human touches, mm, isn't mm, it? I mean, I always, I, I always wonder, what, what do they do if they made a mistake? You know, oh, after well. all that, what would they do? <laughs> if they made a mistake, there were, there were several options. The more inventive scribe would actually sort of have a little ladder or a fishing line or something, and he'd be ha hauling up <laughs> the, the correct word or the word that was missing. Yeah, that's great. I like the idea of actually uh, uh, <laughs> having the right letter sort of hovering, yeah, hovering on, a, on, on a crane as if yes. it could be winched into place. Yeah, but that, yeah, that, that but sort of sense that they put the mistake actually in. They did. And they make a virtue or a joke out of it. Yes.